is in an offside position. Offside is the most complicated rule in football. Decisions on average take 70 seconds and can be deemed very inconsistent by fans watching the game due to their subjective perspective. FIFA's semi-automated offside technology is an AI using Hawkeye technology and aims to fix this inconsistency by bringing an objective perspective to the referees and the fans and reduce the decision time to 25 seconds. This tech is also the reason why you will now see an unusual sight before the game where football needs to be charged through USB-C before the game begins. The hope is that through this tech, FIFA will fix the frustration that we all feel when our favorite team scores, we celebrate, but then we see the linesman holding the flag up and the replays show that they were wrong. But first, if you haven't watched football too much, what is an offside? It's the rule stating that a player attacking the opponent's goal cannot be closer to the goal than both the ball and the second closest opposing player. In other words, if the only thing standing between you and the goal is the goalkeeper, while you don't have the ball, you're offside. Now it's the kind of thing that can be very difficult to spot and stops play all the time because all it takes is for someone's need to be half an inch closer to the goal than the opposing player and they're offside. And it should be an objective call, but due to the referees having a limited view and a subjective perspective, this is incredibly hard to do. The angle at which you see it really matters. Consider this moment for example, and because of this, the fans watching also have a hard time accepting a decision and that can lead to frustration. Football already has a video assistant referee, can't they solve this problem? Even with that, time and time again, such decisions are often taken wrong. For example, this goal by Juventus against Salernitana. It was given wrongly offside and it led to big frustration because the replays clearly showed that this wasn't offside. With the video assistant referee, a referee in the video room has access to footage from 33 cameras. This referee then picks the best angle, draws the offside line manually and provides this footage to the on-field referee to take a look. This enhances the objectivity and the accuracy of calls but it still relies on perspective and for a human being to manually draw the line and that takes a long time. And this is also why currently fans have a hard time accepting video assistant referee and 74% of fans are against it. The hope is that by using AI and clear visual data to determine offside, this will get rid of many false errors and gripes around the video assistant referee. So how does it work? This AI uses 12 cameras attached to the roof of the stadium to track the ball and each player's movements 50 times a second using machine learning. The ball also includes a sensor that broadcasts its position 500 times a second as compared to 50 times in conventional video assistant referee. So the World Cup ball is called Al Rihla. It's designed by Adidas, manufactured in Pakistan, and it has one key innovation called IMU, an inertial measurement unit sensor inside. This allows the semi-automated offside technology to compare the exact moment that the ball was kicked with the position of the team's last defender and the opposing team striker. This level of precision is key for very tight situations in which it's often difficult for referees to quickly call offsides. Sometimes a goal and the result of a whole match can depend on this. Whenever an offside is detected, an alert is sent to the video match officials. They then inform the referee and the system generates a 3D animation of the offside automatically. Whereas before, the officials using the VAR technology had to manually find the correct kick moment and draw the offside line themselves. Now all they have to do is confirm the offside suggested by the system. And if the offside is confirmed by the referee, the 3D animation is then broadcast on a large screen in the stadium to allow fans to see why the call was made. Now imagine that you're a computer, you're relying on cameras to capture data. This data tells you how every pixel at every frame appears. For example, how much green, how much red, and how much blue each pixel has. Data scientists have developed different techniques to address this problem. One is called convolutional neural network. They work by detecting objects layer by layer. One way to understand how this works is to think about the process of trying to discern the identity of an object in a pitch black room. 
using your hands to feel the object, you will ask a series of questions that become increasingly more specific. For example, you may wonder, is it rigid? Is it soft? This knowledge represents the first layer of this network and in CNNs, this is referred to as convolution. Now, after identifying the first layer, you will ask more questions like what texture the object has, how big is it, or what type of shape it holds. As each of these questions is answered, another layer forms and it increases your overall understanding of what is in front of you. And this is broadly how CNNs work. So once enough information has been gathered to make guesses, a classification process is then used to cross-check the computer's hypothesis with known objects. So this AI was trained against huge video databases full of objects that had been manually identified by human beings. In this case, a field full of football players. And this is how AI learns how the players look after intensive training. This technology can easily and quickly detect and track players. So with the sensor of the ball relaying the position of the ball 500 times a second and 12 motion tracking cameras under the roof of the stadium using machine learning to track 29 different points in players' bodies, the system alerts referee when a player is offside. The data points that the cameras use include extremities that are relevant for an offside decision like the upper arms, toes, knees and the head. In other words, the system knows the exact position of all the players at any given moment. Let's specifically talk about the ball now. Within every match ball, there's a device that weighs 14 grams and has its two sensors. One is an ultra wideband sensor and the other one is the IMU as we already spoke about. Whereas the ultra wideband sensor is used for precise positional data and it can also transmit data in real time to constantly track the ball's position, the IMU helps detect more nuanced movements of objects in space. So anytime the ball is kicked, headed, thrown, or even so much as tapped, the system picks it up at 500 times a second. And data is sent in real time from these sensors to a local positioning system, which involves a setup of network antennas installed around the playing field that take in and store the data for immediate use. So when a ball flies out of bounds during the course of play, and a new ball is thrown and or kicked in to replace it, the backend system automatically detects the new ball and utilizes its data without the need for human intervention. So now you have 12 cameras doing their bit at 50 frames per second and now this ball is also transmitting 500 frames a second so how do you sync up the two? A PTP master clock has been used which allows synchronization between both of them and is precise down to one millionth of a second. The precision of this technology is the reason why FIFA was so confident why Cristiano Ronaldo hadn't touched the ball. It just scraped past him and he didn't have any impact. So it was a goal given to Bruno Fernandes instead. FIFA were also confident that this technology would work because they also employed ground truth testing using a different camera system where they had 36 cameras with reflective markers on the ball and on each player for ultra accurate tracking. Another key test that Adidas ran with the ball was that they wanted to make sure that the addition of sensor did not change how the ball felt to the players. They did this in two ways. One was through blind player testing where they asked players from different clubs in Germany, Spain and England to tell if there was a difference between the normal ball and the infused sensor ball. And the other was a mechanical shooter testing where robotic shooting devices were employed to kick the ball at varying speeds, spins and directions. And then high speed cameras were used to evaluate the flight of the ball to ensure that the presence of the sensor actually did not create an abnormal flight path. So after the extensive testing, they found that there was no difference at all between the two balls. Which is great news and that allowed FIFA to employ this technology at this World Cup. But even though we're using the most advanced tech that we have available to us in sports right now, we're still barely scratching the surface. The benefits of this tech are obvious. It removes the video angle limitations of video assistant referees and draws the offside line automatically and creates a near one-to-one -one recreation of the event. There are no frame rate delays and we've already seen how much time it has saved at this year's World Cup. So if you stuck around till the end, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Please leave a comment and let me know how I can improve my content because I'm constantly trying to do that and your feedback would be immensely helpful. Thank you. Bye.